Right now, as you're watching this, work is still going on in Egypt on something truly massive, the new Delta Project. It's the biggest agricultural plan in the country's history. Egypt spending billions of dollars on this project while they have the immense and magnificent Nile River. And maybe one of the most ambitious in the world. The idea sounds almost impossible. Build an artificial river 71 miles long across the edge of the Sahara Desert. This man-made river will move about 2.6 billion gallons of water every year through land that has never seen rain turning sand into soil and desert into farmland. A river like no other in the world. 10 million cubic meters of water per day is on land higher than the Nile River. It's not science fiction. It's happening right now. But the question is, why is Egypt doing it? The answer has everything to do with people, food, and survival. Back in February 2020, Egypt's population reached 100 million. The new citizen was a baby girl named Yasmin, born in Minya. In Cairo, a digital counter flashed to celebrate the milestone. But for Egypt's planners, that number wasn't a reason to cheer. It was a warning. A hundred years ago, the population was about 13 and a half million. In just one century, it grew almost tenfold. By late 2022, it was already 104 million. Now it's around 117 million. Experts predict it could reach 128 million by 2030 and 162 million by 2050. That means nearly 50 million new people to feed, house, and employ in one generation. It's a staggering challenge for a country where almost everyone lives along a narrow green strip beside the Nile. 95% of Egypt's people live on just 4% of the land. That 4% is a fertile belt stretching along the Nile River and spreading into the lush delta. Everything beyond it is sand, dry, harsh, and empty. Only about 4% of the country's total area can be farmed, and that number is shrinking rapidly. Cities are spreading across fields, and the sea is creeping into the soil. Satellite data shows Egypt loses around 2% of its farmland every decade. In places like Alexandria, the amount of farmland fell by 11% from 1987 to 2019, while urban areas grew by the same amount. Saltwater intrusion has damaged another 15% of Egypt's most fertile land. Climate change and global warming leads to drought and desertification. With the population growing and good soil vanishing, the country's food supply is under real pressure. To fill the gap, Egypt depends on imports. Food and agricultural goods make up 40% of all imports. The world is facing a bigger crisis because it has not been renewed. Egypt still needs the same volumes of wheat. And more than half of what Egyptians eat comes from abroad. The country is one of the biggest wheat importers on earth. In one recent year, it bought about 12 and a half million tons of wheat and over 9 million tons of corn. It also brings in soybeans, beef, dairy, and animal feed. That dependence became dangerous when the war in Ukraine disrupted exports from Russia and Ukraine, the two countries that supply around a third of the world's wheat. Egypt got about 85% of its wheat from them. When shipping stopped and prices jumped more than 50%, Egypt's economy and its people felt it immediately. Egypt authorities have been diversifying the country's grain supply as the fighting in Ukraine drags on in its second year. Bread is more than food in Egypt. It's life. Most families eat it three times a day. To eat without bread is almost unthinkable, like eating in China without rice. It's cheap, filling, and symbolic of stability. When bread prices rise, tension rises too. That's why every shock to wheat supply hits Egypt like an earthquake. It's why the government sees agriculture not only as economics, but as national security. To feed the people, Egypt must grow more at home. Yet with the fertile delta crowded and the Nile stretched thin, the only place left to grow is the desert. For decades, Egypt has tried to reclaim desert land using irrigation and groundwater. Along highways west of Cairo, you can already see green patches, fields, and small towns carved out of the sand. Farmers there grow grains, fruits, and vegetables, some even for export. But desert farming is tough and costly. Soil is poor, water is deep, and maintenance never ends. Many of these areas were later abandoned as water ran short and the land reverted to desert. That The country will go through a crisis period. It's inevitable. Egypt's leaders knew something bigger and more permanent was needed. That's where the new Delta project comes in. 
The new delta aims to cultivate about 2.2 million fed dams of land. That's roughly 2 million acres. To make this possible, engineers are creating an artificial river system that mixes treated agricultural drainage, groundwater, and reused water. 14 miles of underground pipelines and about 57 miles of open canals will deliver life to the new fields. Altogether, the system will provide around 2.6 billion gallons of water. The project sits west of the Nile Delta and will include new towns, farms and roads. For infrastructure, we are building roads and linking them with basic facilities. Officials say it will create over 5 million jobs. It's Egypt's biggest attempt yet to push civilization into the Sahara. The cost is about $5.8 billion, almost double the early estimate. Land along the highway between Rod Al Farag and Al Daba has been set aside. Soil tests show more than 90% of that area can support strategic crops like wheat, corn, soy, potatoes, and vegetables. The water will come partly from groundwater reserves, about 650 billion gallons a year. But to avoid draining them, the project blends it with treated drainage water from the Al Hammam treatment plant. It's a complex system dependent on technology and timing. Over 35 private companies are already helping with construction, but President Abdel Fattah El Sisi insists the government must stay in control. The plan will unfold in three stages. First building infrastructure and canals, then adding dams and reservoirs, and finally planting and cultivating the land. This is not Egypt's first try to green the desert. In the late 1990s, the government launched the New Valley Project to carry water from Lake Nasser to the Western Desert. It was intended to create new farming and industrial communities, but it never achieved its goals. Now, decades later, Egypt is reviving that dream on a far larger scale, yet the desert doesn't surrender easily. Sand is the biggest enemy. Dunes drift with the wind, blocking roads, burying villages, and filling canals. When sand clogs irrigation canals, water flow drops and crops die. To stop that, engineers must stabilize dunes using rocks, fences, or special plants that hold the sand in place. Without this constant defense, any new river in the desert would slowly choke under its own sand. Money is another worry. Egypt's economy is strained, and some critics ask if now is the right time for such a massive project, but others argue there's no choice. Depending on imports, forever, is unsustainable. And Egypt's water problems are growing more complicated every year. The Nile, which supports 90% of the population, now faces upstream challenges. Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam began filling in stages, cutting flows downstream. Egypt and Sudan protested, but Ethiopia went ahead. On September 10th, 2023, Ethiopia completed the fourth and final filling phase. While the situation stabilized, it showed how fragile Egypt's water supply can be. For Cairo, projects like the New Delta are a way to protect the country from decisions made by others. Alongside the New Delta, Egypt built the world's largest wastewater treatment and recycling plant for agriculture. It covers 79 acres and processes about 2 billion gallons of water a day, enough to irrigate over a million acres west of the Nile Delta. It also helps clean up pollution near Lake Mariut and Alexandria's coast, and it prevents flooding by redirecting excess water to the new fields. The plant broke four Guinness World Records, the largest treatment facility, the fastest flow rate, the largest epoxy coating surface, and the most powerful sludge processing unit. It's a symbol of how seriously Egypt takes the battle for water. Even with these breakthroughs, water remains scarce. Less than 4% of the land can be farmed, and that's shrinking. To compensate, Egyptian farmers are turning to soilless agriculture, hydroponics. In Egypt, where the population is growing and the agricultural land is shrinking, this could be a solution. In hydroponic systems, plants grow in nutrient-rich water, inside greenhouses instead of soil. Roots rest in sand, gravel, foam or clay, while sensors control light, humidity and temperature. According to a 2020 report from the World Wildlife Fund, hydroponics uses about 10% of the water that traditional farming needs. It also cuts pesticide use and fertilizer costs by more than half. For Egypt, where every drop matters, this method could be revolutionary. But water politics are never simple. 
In 2024, 10 countries sharing the Nile signed a new agreement to manage the river more fairly. Egypt and Sudan refused. They still rely on an old 1929 treaty that gave them the lion's share of the Nile's water, about 20 of the 22 trillion gallons available then, while ignoring the other countries. Now, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda and Burundi have ratified a new deal for joint management. Egypt fears losing part of its historic share, but the truth is, no country along the Nile has enough water. The river links them all, and conflict over it never fully disappears. That's one reason Egypt is investing heavily in desalination. Over the next five years, it plans to build 17 new desalination plants powered by solar energy. Together, they should produce about 740 million gallons of fresh water per day, with room to double that later. Today, Egypt's capacity is around 21 million gallons per day. If the plan succeeds, by 2050, it could reach 1.7 billion gallons. Investors are eager, and local companies like Calm Solar are proposing to use renewable energy to keep costs down. Desalination, wastewater reuse, and the new Delta Artificial River are all pieces of one survival puzzle. Egypt's future depends on holding these pieces together. It must protect the Nile, stabilize its deserts, recycle its water, and rethink farming. The new Delta project is a bold attempt to do it all at once. It's not perfect. It's expensive, fragile, and constantly threatened by sand, heat, and time. But it's also hope made visible. A river carved out of dry land to feed millions yet to be born. If it works, Egypt could grow more of its own food, reduce imports, and regain some control over its future. If it fails, the desert will take back what was borrowed, and the struggle for bread will grow sharper. For now, the machines keep diggings, the water keeps flowing, and Egypt keeps betting that it can turn the sand green again. If you enjoyed this deep dive, leave a like. It helps more people see it. And here's a question to end on. Do you think Egypt's artificial river can really secure food for its growing population, or will the desert win in the end?